this. There's no problem. Well, I don't have enough information about Obofo. Mm. People are saying that Obofo has come to me to beg or whatever is not true. Anybody who has information that is detrimental to Ghanaian human beings, their lives, bring it. I'll hit him hard. You do it? Yes. But you were doing pastors. Now you're doing a guy called Ibra One. What's, what's that about? Let me finish with these pastors. So from Bedu Kobi came Obinim. Obinim, yes. Obinim, I did not insult him the first time. I said, you see, they embarrassed themselves. Because a Nigerian lady was teasing Obinim because Obinim had said that he had cure for coronavirus. And if you buy his oil, $40, whatever, you be cured. So the guy, the, the lady was teasing him. And I made mention that, you know, you do this, you ridicule yourself. Now you become international ridicule. That was it. I don't know if he did not understand the word ridicule. So he sent his missiles, his boys, left and right. When you look at them, they are all armed robbers. Obedience boys. Yes. When you look at their faces, then you ask yourself, are these guys really men of God? The mm. appearance, the looks, you know. So they were throwing missiles and they thought Obinim came out, you know, you see he's a bush boy because he said that, look, can I Japan, if you give me evidence today, I'll give you $500,000. And he started talking trash. You are confused. You are quite tough. You can feed can I Japan. So he does. With, with my 22 kids, you're going to feed me, pay their school fees, then you tough boy. <laughs> so, so, okay, I like challenges like that. Then I started hitting hard. You know the irony of the whole thing? Mm. Obinim's father mm -hmm. and my stepfather who took care of me are cousins. Oh, I see. Yeah, real cousins. Your stepfather who organized for you to go to Germany? Yeah. Mm. Obinim's father is his cousin. I see. Yeah. So, are, are you going to leave Obinim? People still well, go to I've church. given... I've given it to the police and Yoko. After the police, Yoko will go after him too. Because he has done illegal transfers. You don't go after Orthodox pastors, uh, Catholics, and all that. If you make a mistake, my brother, my sword is here and there. If any Orthodox pastor or priest makes a mistake and deceives the public, I will hit him hard. But who has given you the right to do that? You are not a, are you yourself a righteous man? They say no man is perfect. So, yeah, no man is perfect, so what, but what? I will not mm -hmm. go and kill for money. Okay. I will not go and deceive people, the poor people, and take their money. Mm -hmm. I won't do that. Mm -hmm. When it comes to that, I am righteous. I will never kill any human being. I will never dupe any human being. So where is your unrighteousness? Which area? As a human being, I may do certain things that may not be right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So you cannot sit here and say that you're 100% perfect. No. But you don't, you don't do people, you don't kill people, you don't do things in the name of God and take no. people's... But these people... Look, if you can show some of their clips, if mm -hmm. I knew, I would have brought some for you to see that. They so, don't preach. Mm -hmm. They are always talking about wealth, wealth, wealth. They don't preach. But why the do gospel? so many people still go and listen to them? It means they are solving a problem. What problem? I don't that know, is but why, why do people go there? I, I am creating this awareness mm. that there is no spiritual powers in these people. First of all, anybody listening to me, get it straight today that if these so-called pastors who indoctrinate you and tell you that they have seen something wrong with you, you can't have a baby, you can't have this. If indeed they are right, they can see what is wrong with you. Why didn't Obedim see what was coming against him? Yes. Why didn't he, Nigel, see what was coming? Get it straight here. They use their brains to dupe you guys. They don't have focal, nothing. They don't have anything. Do you, do you believe in prayer at all? Yeah. You believe in prayer? Yes. Do you pray? Sometimes. For what? Well, if uh, I think I'm overloaded with problems that I feel I need to release tension and I need assistance from God, yeah, 
I pray. But I seldom pray, though. Because God said he has created me in his own, own image. image. Mm. So, do you, do you go to church? Me. First, I used to go, but now it's a waste of time. What church were you going to? Yeah, I was born into Methodist church. So you used to go there? Yeah. But, but now you don't go anymore? No. Do you encourage your children to go to church? Well, if you want to go, I don't have a problem. But if you go to any one-man church, I'll stop you. What is one-man church? Ah, you know these one-man churches here. We, no, no, you don't go there. Go to the traditional church where they will preach. You know, this Saturday, was it Saturday or Sunday? Today is what? Tuesday, right? Yes, Tuesday. Sunday. There was this uh, pastor or priest, Methodist priest, on a man FM between 5 and 6 p.m. The way he preached. I screamed at my kids. My four girls were with me in the car. And I screamed at them. I said, please. They were making noise. I said, I said, please. I want to listen to something. I know the way this man preached about fear. Fear. This is the exact thing fake pastors are using to dupe people yeah. in this country. The fear. They create fear. And the psychology they use is that any time the gentleman here will come to me with his problem. Right there, he has fear. So what I have to do to dupe him is to create more fear. More fear. <laughs> okay? So this is all the trick they are using. And that's a modus operandi. Yes. They create fear, panic. Then they dupe. And they dupe you. What is this about? What is, if I'm a pastor, should I be afraid? That is now moving from Nigel, it may come to me. Yeah, if you are fake, you should be afraid. I'm fake means I do what as a pastor? You do evil things against your fellow human beings. As a or pastor? Or in the name of God. Yes. Okay, so any pastor who is fake. doing evil things yes. yeah, in the you name of God, they have to be worried. You have to come after Where you. Where do you get the information from? Oh, one touch. One touch means what? Now, mm -hmm. let me tell you how I started the whole thing and now it's coming from everywhere. Yeah. You know, I picked, I first picked on Bedukubi. Mm -hmm. First, he insulted women, Fanti women, Ashanti women, yeah, that, yes. women yeah. and I blasted him. Mm -hmm. That was over. But I was watching the guy consistently. He doesn't preach, only insulting Ekufuado. Mm -hmm. So I checked, ah, what is wrong with this guy? I really want to know. Does he have a problem with President Ekufuado? So I started digging him. So one day, I was talking to a young man. Said this Bedukubi. I said, oh, honorable. I know him very well. All his cars that he's using are stolen cars. He doesn't even pay duty. I said, mm, 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 mm. I'm interested. I started talking to the guy. He actually took me to his house to show me where he lives. And all those cars. Oh, you have time like that? Oh, yeah. I have time. Okay. I have time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make a mistake. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make a mistake. You, you see, reputation is hard to build. So you cannot just use a second without evidence to destroy somebody's hard mm -hmm. one reputation. Mm -hmm. So I make sure I do my investigation. When I'm hitting you, I hit you hard. Mm -hmm. So I went there. Checked the house and everything. You know, the wall is a bit high, so you cannot even see. see. But we managed to see some few A over there. Okay. Then we left. Now I have a hint. Then the guy brought those boys who changed their chassis numbers. To you? Yeah. You paid for it? No. Because they themselves were scared that hmm, this guy, if he starts something, we are all in trouble. Mm -hmm. So had, they had to come and confess mm -hmm. to me that when you go to his house, this car, they've changed the chassis number. This car, they haven't paid the duty. You know. So I was gathering it, gathering it. Then I hit him the first one. I didn't tell him that <laughs> I know those lot, cars. Yeah. yeah. And he came to brag that he has a Rolls Royce with some stars in this and that. Talking like, so okay, now let's go. I hit him the second one. That you, you do stolen cars. So I called the security. Say, let's go there. That time he had packed some of them. He moved the cars from his house mm -hmm. to pack them at uh, where the ministers used to stay. Sakumono Flats. Right. 
He went and inspected all those. Uh, so we told the security agents and they picked. And the guys, they had hinted me that, look, these guys, he hasn't paid the duty. And truly, truly, the Lincoln and the Porsche, he had not paid the duty. Even the custom officers, they screwed up because the guys who changed the chassis numbers of some cars in his house had come to tell me how to remove the thing and see the original. Mm. But I was telling them, communicating with them, they were still not listening. And they left it. If not, would have taken about six cars from him. So you took two? They took two? Yeah, they took two. So what's the latest on that case? Is it going to court? Is it going to court? Yeah, the cars. The cars? Yeah. Are going to court? Yeah. Okay, so Nigel will be done. You'll be done with Nigel soon. Well, it depends on the next person on the list. If I get serious information more than Nigel, I'll hold. Because when I got serious 